Welcome to a video from thegistlife.com. In this video, I'm going to show you the new features in the Korg Mod Wave. This is the version 2 update, I think the actual version is 2.12, that brings it in line with the Mod Wave Mark II. There's loads of changes, including some really nice uh, improvements. So, in the video, I'm going to show you some of my highlights. I won't show you everything, but I'll show you my highlights. I'm going to start with the free running LFO as one of the most requested features for the Mod Wave. I'm going to be using the updated um, librarian software because it's easy to show on the screen. I've just got my mod wave here uh, as well, so we'll be using the combination of the two, but it's easy to show on the uh, librarian app. So, what I've got a selection of patches as well that I've created to make use of the new features. Okay, so let's have a look at the free running airflows. This is my favorite new feature. I've got a filter, let's turn the filter down. Okay. And I'm going to apply the filter LFO to this. So it's going to. There we go, we can hear it kicking on there. Let's slow it down a bit. Now, each time I press the key, it always starts from the beginning of the, um, the filter LFO. So it's like from there and going through like that. I could change the phase and the offset, but it would always start like that. But if I do on sync note and free run this time the LFO once I've started off it carries on running so as I press the notes I'm getting the LFO not being re-triggered which doesn't sound much when I play on the keys but if I put an arpeggiator on You can hear now that the LFO carries on running. If I take the foot back to the old way, that's the old way. And the new one, you can hear. It. And this gives you some interesting options like this. And if I go to one of my patches that I've created. Modulate the cutoff frequency. So we'll put it back the old way. So that's the old way. And that's the new way. So it really does give you that nice um, effect that you can do on all that more synths. There's some other things you can do on the LFO as well. Uh, before I'll show you some other examples. I've used one on here um, for PWM, so pulse width modulation on the strings. Let's just turn that one down. Right, so here we are, we've got the oscillator that being using pulse width modulation. You can see that's being controlled by oscillator 2's envelope. And oscillator 2 is in free running mode. So it means whenever I start playing the chords, the pulse width will be always at the modulation point where the LFO is controlling it rather than being really triggered. Now one of the options it is you have got a trigger option. So I could re-trigger it and I could choose to use uh, oh that's a little bit off screen, let me just slide that down. I could use a controller to trigger it, so I could use a damper pedal, say. So use the foot there to re-trigger it. But you could also use the motion sequencer, you could use um, velocity, you could use aftertouch, poly aftertouch, something like that as well. So it gives you a lot of control over those those options on there. So um, definitely an interesting new feature, these syncs as well. There's something else on the on the LFOs as well is you've got a delay of the LFOs so you can actually delay the LFO kicking in a bit like say on the Juno you could do that so I don't know if I've got a patch set up for that but let's um so this one here is using the free running LFOs to modify the uh, sawtooth width Give us a nice mix, 
But as an example, I can whack up the um, LFO on the amp. And I can in include a bit of a delay on that. Then you can have a fade as well, which was already there. And now you've got the combination of both. But I'm using that free running LFO on the oscillator one uh, to give me that width sound on the sawtooth that doesn't need to be triggered. So that's that's really uh, useful that one as well. So LFO improvements really good on here. There's some other uh, interesting changes as well over on the effects. Uh, we can see on the master effects on this one. There's a pre and post. So if you put it into post is what the current mode. So if I turn down the output level, you don't hear anything. But if I put it into pre, you can hear the reverb. Which you So you get the reverb of the level before the mixer, and uh, I can add it, add, it, add the output back in. So you get the control over that. So you can have pre or post. Uh, another change, useful change is the octave and transpose options up there. Oh, one thing I mentioned on the wavetables um, display, if I use the free running saw width on this is a useful one. So over here on the mod wave, you can see the position, the, um, the display of the, of the oscillator. But you notice how it's moving now? That's because it reflects the changes made by the modifier control as well. So you can see it moving real time because I've got the LFO modifying the uh, position. So that's nice to speak. Just when you do the sound, you can see how your patches have been affected by that. Now another interesting thing for sound design is some random. So here I've got an arpeggiator and the cutoff is actually using a random. So we've got four new random controls. generators we've got a plus we've got two plus randomizers so it produce random values plus and we've got two plus minus that produces random minus random random values plus or negative so I'm using that to modify the cutoff frequency and the resonance so let's see. Okay. but I'm also using that to modify the tuning of them as well so even if I put the resonance and filter off let's uh, turn off the arpeggiator and let's exaggerate those as well Today you can hear its values are being random as like a an old synth going out of tune or whatever. So you, you can use it subtly to produce sort sort of the randomness of a an analog synth. Another set of options we've got is with the chaos pad, is we've now got chaos plus and minus, whereas before we just had chaos. So you've got the chaos pad X and Y. Now you can do the you can split it down, you can have the X plus and the X minus as separate values so that they can um, modify, so you can have separate things modified. So here I could have the cutoff be modified by the X plus, but the resonance be modified by the X minus. So that one chaos can now adjust both controls. <laughs> like that so you've got so the effect of the chaos pad rather than controlling two destinations x and y of, of uh, x x and y you can now got four 
controls of that so that gives you some interesting options if I go so I can modify the cutoff the position the morph and I can have four values four things being modified by that so again it's another nice option on there another one actually is chaos angle and distance I don't remember that one being there before so I think that's a, a new one on there um, another change, which is actually a fix, which is a, to an issue that uh, I found a couple of times. If you make a patch on the Mobwave native and then export it to the hardware version with the previous release, um, some of the LFOs just didn't work at all. So you know, no matter what, do you couldn't trigger the LFOs, and that's been fixed with this. So I think that I'm, I'm sure there'll be an update to the Mobwave native that fixes that as well. But if you're, you're running the new versions of the Mobwave hardware then that won't be an issue for you. Also, another uh, addition is we've got uh, Pitch Bend Plus and Pitch Bend Minus. So previous we had Pitch Bend, and now you've got Pitch Bend Plus and Minus. So they only send the positive or negative values, ignoring the, the other polarity on there. Um, another one that I spotted on there is this Constant Max one. The Constant Max generates a maximum modulation value. So it's... Uh, 100 basically so a maximum so if you need it to just have a, a fixed high value then that would do that as well another new feature is the after touch uh, source um, you can control that now whether you've got the channel and poly, poly you can have this you can have channel poly poly or channel or off so it means that you don't have to redo all your patches if you want to use polyphonic aftertouch so you can do it on the on a sort of global level on there as well so you can try these so some of them are using the free running things like the sync so here's an example of using the uh, vectors and that's using the LFOs to control the vectors. You've already heard the free running out. Arpeggiator. So finally, I've got this set of examples that I've been using here, so I will include those as a link to download on uh, the digitallifestyle.com. You can try these and uh, all using new ideas from or all using the things like the LFO and the randoms. I'm actually going to work on some of these, uh, my patches now to, to sort of make them more authentic perhaps for the old analog ones are using the randomized functions the, certainly the uh, free running LFOs and we're using those as well so I'll update this set as time goes on but thanks for watching this video I hope you enjoy your new features in the mob wave the LFOs are really great and also the random and the chaos and everything else that's in there and all the bug fixes as well that uh, also on the digitallife.com I've got loads of patches I think it's over 400 now for the mob wave classic Roland sounds classic yeah, Korg sounds, so uh, check those out. Thanks for watching the video, and I'll see you on the next one.